Grant Robertson. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Like other our Labour Party speakers, I, I want to note that we will be supporting this bill through to the Select Committee. Uh, that is the extent of our support at this time, and I, I want to go into why we are uh, limiting our support and also to talk about some ideas for, for how we might be able to promote a, a commission that we do um, support through all the, way it's pro all the way through its process. But ideally, the three key elements that we need to talk about are an independent productivity commission, a well-resourced productivity commission, and a broadly mandated productivity commission. And they are the three areas where, where I have concerns about the current uh, proposal. But overall, Labor wants to support this through because we do share the view that's been expressed around the House today that improving our productivity is critical to the future well-being of New Zealanders. And it was interesting in 2003, Mr Speaker, the OECD, um, in one of their reports on New Zealand, and it was looking back over both a period in which National and Labor had been governing, it said, the mystery is why a country that seems close to best practice in most of the policies that are regarded as the key drivers of growth is nevertheless just an average performer. And the OECD then went into the various areas. They talked about property rights, a relatively small public sector compared to the rest of the world, um, low levels of corruption, low labour costs, a flexible labour market, um, the ease of doing business in New Zealand being the, being the second best or best in the world through that period. So all of those situations were in place in New Zealand, but seemingly we couldn't get past what has been called by uh, some academics uh, the uh, productivity paradox. Now, there are a number of reasons that are, have been then talked about subsequent to that, and they are some of the kinds of issues that I think a Productivity Commission would need to take on. So this is an important uh, aspect of, of the government's programme. Somewhat ironic that it's driven by the ACT Party to create um, some new bureaucracy. Having previously heard from the ACT Party about the, the evils of backroom public servants, and indeed from the National Party as well, we stand here today to promote a bill to create a new bureaucracy. So um, clearly backroom public servants have something to offer, and, I, and I'm sure we'll all appreciate the, the work that will go in, into that from, from the public service. On that point, I do have some concerns around the question of resourcing. And I appreciate the fact that, that nobody wants to add a great deal more cost onto the taxpayer to create a productivity commission. But simply by shuffling the money around from other agencies, I am concerned about what will now not be done by those agencies and whether or not uh, this, the Productivity Commission is in fact going to be su sufficiently resourced itself. With a budget of around $5 million um, to do that, as um, the Minister of Finance said at the start today, it is questionable, and David Clendon on behalf of the Greens raises, whether it will actually be able to do the things that um, we all want it to do in this House. I think we need to ensure that we invest in, in making a Productivity Commission that, that is able to undertake the inquiries, able to undertake the studies and provide the independent advice, and we need to make sure it's resourced to do that. We can't penny pinch on that at the beginning, because in the end it then won't deliver to us in the way that we all want it to do. Mr Speaker, a number of people have mentioned uh, the importance of the Australian Productivity Commission, its role and, uh, and the breadth of its mandate. And I do think when we look at the bill in front of us today and the Commission's functions, it is interesting to note that the first three mentioned are all around the question of uh, regulatory matters. Well, actually, the, the second and third ones are all around the question of regulatory matters. And they were the three that the Minister of Finance highlighted today. And I think it's vitally important that we put on the record of the House today that if this Commission is simply an exercise in saying we want deregulation, we want to see a smaller public sector, all of the messages that we hear from the ACT Party on a consistent basis, then it is not something that this side of the House can support. It must have a broad definition of what productivity is. And you, you could classically say that, you know, some people would say, well, productivity is just output divided by hours work and that'll give, you what, that'll give you how productive you are. Well, that kind of definition I know is not the one that has been understood by most people in the House today. But if we allow ourselves to be narrowed down, we get drawn into debates about things that actually, in the long term, are not going to drive the economy forward. They're not going to make the economy more productive. This is actually understood inside the, the New Zealand Public Service, and both the Department of Labour and also um, the Treasury have uh, their own definitions or their own areas of productivity that they believe New Zealand should be working on. And it's interesting to note that a couple of the really important ones that are picked up by both the Treasury and Department of Labour are innovation and skills. And I particularly want to talk about the skills matter now because the absence of a skills strategy from this government has been one of the yawning gaps in an attempt to drive the economy forward. We must have the people who are going to do that. We need a proper skills strategy and proper investment in skills and training. And I would like to think 
that the Productivity Commission might make one of its early tasks looking at the question of skills and training, workplace training and also um, the tertiary sector and through into secondary schools about how we're developing that skilled workforce because it's recognised now as being one of the key drivers of productivity and we need to make sure that's included here as well. Innovation I think is a particularly important part, not only innovation in the workplace but the general place of innovation, research, science and technology in New Zealand and David Parker has already, already talked about that today. So these are elements of productivity that are much broader than the question of regulation. They're much broader than the question of how we can shrink down the size of the state sector or the public <coughs> sector. They are actually the drivers and the important issues that need to be addressed by the Commission. And I do have a concern that the level of independence of this Commission as written down in this bill is not sufficient. And I hope that it is something that the Select Committee will take some time to look at and ensure that they will be able to act independently. Um, obviously somebody has to appoint the commissioners, and clearly that's likely to be the government of the day. But what I'd urge the government of the day that's putting this bill through is to ensure that a truly independent commission can be created. And in order to do that, they need the mandate, they need a broad mandate, they need a flexible mandate, and but they all... Yes, that's right. And it won't be Don Brash, Mr Parker, at all. Um, but they also need to make sure that the, the people who are picked as commissioners are people who are broadly acceptable across this parliament. Because if this productivity commission is going to mean anything, it needs to be able to have the confidence of this parliament that it's truly independent. And as my colleague Mr Parker said before, it's hard not to look at this, not to see the background from the ACT Party and see regulation, deregulation as the centrepiece. It must be far broader than that. And if we, look, if we go to where the Australian Productivity Commission's uh, instructions are, and my colleague Leanne Dalziel mentioned one or two of these, but it's, they bear repeating. The instructions to the Australian Productivity Commission are improve the productivity and economic performance of the economy, reduce regulation, yes. But then it goes on to talk about efficient and internationally competitive Australian industries, um, adjustment to structural change, regional employment and development. Now that's a critical element that needs to be discussed more and more in New Zealand. Um, under Jim Anderton's watch, regional development was given a real focus under the, under the fifth Labor government. That has slipped away with Jerry Brownlee's role um, as regional and economic development minister. Trade policies are included. But here's the really interesting one, the last one of the instructions. Ensure Australian industry develops in, an e in ecologically sustainable ways. And I do want to echo the comments of David Clendon that we have to include that definition of, of sustainability, of how New Zealand goes forward as a country that, that continues its clean green reputation but actually makes it real. Well, that's right. Mr Parker says, how do we do that when ACT doesn't believe climate change? And there is yet again another risk of this being dominated by the ACT Party's ideological agenda around regulation. This, this Commission needs a mandate that is both broader and more specifically outlined in the law. We cannot afford to go put this bill all the way through Parliament and leave the definition of productivity as it is now, leave the functions as they are now. That is where the Labor Party will be focusing in the Select Committee. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to conclude by saying that, that productivity in the state sector, which is going to be a major focus of this Commission, is not easily, easily measured. It's pretty difficult to say to a nurse at Christchurch Hospital in the Accident Emergency Department, be more productive. Be more productive or to a teacher in front of a classroom school, be more productive. We have to ensure that when we look at the state sector, we're realistic that the outcomes we're looking for as a country, the health outcomes, the education outcomes, can't always be measured in those hard dollar terms. They can't always be measured in ways that would suit the ACT Party. We need to be able to have a productivity commission that supports and enhances New Zealanders' wellbeings. On this side of the well-being, on this side of the house, we accept a productivity commission is a good idea. We admire the Australian model, whereby there is a broad set of areas that they can look into, that they are instructed to look into. We want an independent commission that can continue to provide that advice and that advice stream to governments of all colours. But what we must not do is narrow that agenda down to that of deregulation and one party's ideology. I call Aaron Gilman.